Most of the kinds of programs that we've written and the kinds of programming languages that we've implemented in this class have been about functional programming, which primarily means programming that avoids state. For example, if we have an area function that takes a shape and we create a rectangle, then every time we call area we're going to get the same value back. It is a pure function in the mathematical sense. There is no state, no side effects, no back channels of communication between different calls to area or between the area function and the area and the rectangle object. The alternative to functional programming is called imperative programming. That is where you do use state or side effects. And we've looked at that a little bit. We looked at boxes and how to implement state. Um, but then even when we did that, we looked at store passing style, which was a functional programming way of implementing uh, imperative programming. The word functional programming can mean some other things, though. Um, in particular, it often means just using functions as values. It's another facet of function in the name. For example, we use functions like map, which take as an argument another function, such as area. Or in our interpreter, when we implement num plus and num times, we implement them in terms of num up, which takes a function plus or times as an argument. Okay. And functions as values is something that's common in functional languages and less common in other languages that predate functional programming, like C, where you have only first-order functions. Uh, you can't nest functions arbitrarily. There's one more implication of functional programming in practice, and that's that it often means data type-oriented programming. We've talked a lot about writing functions that match the shape of the data, so that if we have a, a data type shape with three different variants, then the way that you implement a function on shapes is that it has to consider the three different variants explicitly. Right? Or if you're writing a function on list, because the data type list says it's either empty or cons, then there are two cases in the implementation of function. And there's a recursive call because the cons part of a list has another list inside of it. So Functional programming often looks like this, but that's really more specifically data type oriented programming. And an alternative to data type oriented programming is object oriented programming. So here again is an example of data type oriented programming, where I have the programs area and perimeter. And what data type oriented means is we call an operation with a particular variant and the operation figures out what variant it has this case dispatch. Object-oriented programming flips that around. We take a particular variant and pick an operation in the variant. Right? We send the operation to the variant instead of the variant to the operation. For example, rectangle variant of shape is responsible for implementing area and perimeter on rectangles. Whenever we want to call area on a shape, we take, it, we take the object and we send it the area method. These two different styles uh, can express the same kinds of programs but they have some implement implications for extensibility and, and program maintenance. In particular, with the data type oriented view of programs, whenever you want a new operation, like area, perimeter, or is a shape bigger than some other value, um, then you just write a new function. But if you add a new variant, if we add circle as a new kind of shape, then we have to change all of our functions. Object oriented programming flips this around. Right? By sending operations to objects instead of objects to operations, then when you want a new operation, you have to go change all of your existing objects to add the new operation. On the other hand, if we add circle, which would be a new variant of shapes, we don't have to change anything. We just add a new shape class and implement its methods. This trade-off is the fundamental difference between data type oriented programming and object oriented programming. And so it's one of the things we want to look at as now we start looking at objects.